Hello everyone and welcome back to Asian Noob. Today we'll be going over the upcoming patch notes for April and there are some interesting changes as well as some emissions on the horizon. Let's jump right in. First of all, the Enchanted Grove biome will no longer be available. I know that some of you folks didn't enjoy playing on this biome, but I honestly wish that at least keep it for custom lobbies, as I do think that it's still good to have it as an option. Alas, we won't be able to play on it in the upcoming patch. That said, players who play against the AI will also rejoice here, as the non-cheating hardest AI is back. Furthermore, the devs have added 3 additional options for cheating AI of 1.2x, 1.5x and 2x the resource boost respectively. I do think this is a good compromise until they're able to figure out a harder, fair AI. It's funny how much of a far cry we are from the promised machine learning AI that I made a video about a while ago. The devs have also introduced a few general bug fixes, but the two most notable ones are that fishing boats will now always return to the nearest dock and cancelled buildings blueprints will no longer block future placements. Apart from bug fixes, there are general balance changes as well, starting with, you've guessed it, trade. Well, the only change here is that it's just 10% lower income. I'm not quite sure why the trade trick is still not removed, as it seems to be a no-brainer to not only me, but other members of the community as well. That said, the devs do mention that this balance change is a stepping stone on their way to bigger changes to the trade system. I'm not sure 10% will do it in the interim, but it's at least good to know that the devs are thinking of a rework of some sorts. Hopefully, it includes removing the trade trick as well. Trading aside, the devs are changing trebuchets yet again. The counterweight trebuchet's cost is reduced from 500 wood and 250 gold to 400 wood and 150 gold, but its health and damage are also reduced from 210 HP to 170 and 50 damage to 40 respectively. Furthermore, its bonus damage versus buildings is also reduced from 450 to 375 and its build time is reduced from 35 seconds to 30. The Mongol Traction Trebuchet gets a very similar set of changes as well, as its cost is reduced from 400 wood and 150 gold to 300 wood and 100 gold, but its health and damage are also reduced from 190 HP to 150 and from 50 damage to 40 respectively. Moreover, its bonus damage versus buildings is also reduced from 250 to 200 and its build time from 35 seconds to 30. In a nutshell, these changes allow players to field their first trebuchets much quicker, so trebuchets will be stronger in the mid-game, but will definitely be less population efficient in the later stages of the game. The final general balance change is a nerf to the cannon emplacement, as its cost is increased from 75 gold and 300 stone to 125 gold and 375 stone. This is a sizable nerf to its cost and will help against spamming cannon outposts in the late game. Alright, with the general changes out of the way, let's cover the civilization specific changes starting with the Abbasids. The House of Wisdom landmark, as usual, gets a set of changes to its wings. The trade wing now spawns either 3, 4 or 5 traders depending on which age it was constructed. The military wing provides another archer in the feudal age for a total of 2 spearmen and 2 archers and the culture wing's preservation of knowledge cost is reduced from 50 wood and 125 gold to 25 wood and 75 gold which is comically low now. The Chinese only get one change and it's a bug fix. Chinese palisade walls were not being built 50% faster than other civilizations, so that should be fixed in the upcoming patch. The Delhi Sultanate has three minor changes. Fishing ships are no longer selected with military selection hotkeys, compound of the defenders discount on stone for buildings and emplacements reduced from 25% to 20%, and village fortresses research time is increased from 5 to 6 minutes. The controversial English received two small changes as well, as their network of citadels cost is increased from 75 stone and 200 gold to 150 stone and 350 gold, and wingered footmen now take bonus damage from versus heavy attack types. So, for example, crossbows will deal bonus damage to them as they typically do to other man at arms. The French get their town center production rate bonus rebuffed as it is increased from 10, 10, 15, and 20% to 10, 15, 20, and 25% per age. Also, the bug of royal knights not correctly dealing damage on their next attack after charging will be fixed. The Malians get a minor buff as the sofa's train time is reduced from 30 to 26 seconds. And that's it. You folks aren't tired of watching Malians in Golden League, are you? Mongol Civ bonus gets a big nerf as the Silk Road resource bonus trade requirements are changed from 3, 5, 7 and 9 to 5, 10, 15 and 20 active traders. Also, Kurultai's bonus damage is reduced from 25% to 20%. And finally, the Ottomans. A slight nerf will be applied to their blacksmith and university production influence, as their bonus is reduced from 25, 33, and 40% to 20, 30, and 40%. The Seagate Castle's trader move speed bonus is reduced from 40% to 30%, and trader armor bonus is reduced from 10 to 8. Finally, a UI change is applied to the Ottoman Knight, as it will be called the Ottoman Lancer moving forward. 
Well, that's all you need to know about the upcoming balance changes in April for Age of Empires 4. If you like this summary, then be sure to subscribe for more AoE 4 content. As always, I appreciate your support. Stay happy, be kind to one another, and see you all in the next one.